Well, hi guys, Emma again. Some of you might have realised that I haven't really had another steam engine video up. I missed a week, so that's a bit slack. But there's not a whole lot I can do about that, and life kind of gets a bit hectic. But anyway, um, what I've done is finish this test rig. So it hasn't been completely unproductive. We've got a little tower there with a a fitting in the top to test the pressure gauge and a fitting in here to screw the boiler into. We've finished this boiler. The fitting's all ready to go. We've still got to blank up this pipe. I've left a bit on the end to do that. So what we've done is just got a $2 cake tin from the cheap shop and a $2 chopping board in bamboo from the cheap shop. Made up a tea here, just with quarter 40 model engineer threads and nipples and nuts. And a fitting for the pressure gauge. Everything silver soldered up. So that's holding pressure at 100, okay, it's dropping a little bit. If we give him a pump. And that's pressure well over about 130 there. That should be plenty, I reckon, to pressure test that little boiler. It's about three times what I intend to run it at. So, that's what it looks like. I've had no end of trouble with this fitting here. It is an odd size, and I've made about three different fittings to try and get one that worked. The first one cracked, and the second one was no good at all and this one seems to be okay so that's what most of the hold up is we've had a long weekend in the process so life gets a bit crazy so if we let this pressure off here like that doesn't take much tighten him up undo this banjo on the end. First job is to put a bend in this. The book says just bend it at 90 degrees. So we've done that up in the vise and that should be pretty well good enough I reckon. We've got a couple of fibre washers there so I'll put them put one on there Probably need to fill this boiler up nearly to full with some water first. Grab a jug. Now, here's the interesting thing. I haven't got a clue how to fill this boiler up with water. So it's got about a teaspoonful into it. So I'm going to cut a little bit more off this end here. So that's easy to fill up with an opening in it. And now I'll close that off. So after about 20 minutes of messing around I've got a bottle full of water and it won't empty because it's got an airlock in it if I bolt that on there like it's supposed to go do the fitting up because we haven't got a clue where the half inch spanner is we should be able to pump that to pressure and there we are guys let's hold 150 at 160 psi so I guess the answer is probably to dry this off a bit so about will be 15 minutes later this is still sitting comfortably on about 130 here on the needle 
I can't find any leaks on the boiler anywhere. I reckon we're going to say that that's probably passed. So I've cut the tube again and we've still got plenty of length. And drain them back into the tank. Something I have noticed here, and I don't think it's going to worry us, is that we've managed to dish the ends of the tank here, ends of the boiler a little bit. Um, it certainly hasn't let go, but at 150 psi is probably a bit much for that boiler. Next one I make, if I make another one the same pattern, we mightn't quite test in that high. Why it says in the book to test in that high, I'm not sure. I guess it's just a safety margin. But on hindsight, it's, um, it's certainly taken the dents out of it. But I think at 45 psi or 40 psi, it's going to be plenty good enough now. That's the completed boiler. And now for the, the pressure relief valve. So back over here at the bench, this is our safety valve. I've got a nut I've made that goes through the hole and we've got a screw and a spring. What happens if we put this in the test rig is that it squirts water in about seven or eight places around here. So something isn't round, whether it's the seat of the hole or whether it's actually the screw. The book says we should stop prefixing the my sentences with the book says, but but the book says that we probably should lap this to fit with a bit of brasso. Now I haven't got any brasso. I have got some watchmakers diamantine, which is the next best thing, I guess. It's probably better bit more abrasive so what we've got is some medium oil stain powder and some diamantine polishing powder this is reasonably new it's probably was brought brand new in the 90s and was pretty hard to find then and I've used probably half a, half a teaspoon on the top of it. This is probably 1960s or 1970s anyway, very latest. The last few times I've tried to take the lid off this, I've managed to spill it everywhere. There we go, medium oil stone power powder. I believe that it's the excess from left over from making oil stones. I that may be an urban myth. But that's the story we were fed years ago and whether there's any truth in it. Diamantine I think, which is this one. Um, is probably left over from what's left over from, from making jewels for watches but I doubt it very much actually I reckon it's probably custom ground to size and it's probably a lot more fussy than just the leftovers so what we need is a good pinch of this and probably our hydraulic oil that we use on the lathe is good enough for this nearly as good as watch tie oil the way that balls up it's not but we've got a paste there I reckon if we put that in the vise with a screwdriver we'll soon lap it pretty smooth
So that's pretty smooth. It's taken the, the high spots out of it pretty quick. So I think we're going to leave, have given that a clean up and wash up. I reckon we're going to probably leave that for a bit and go to something a bit finer. A couple of lines of this will make you breathe a lot easier. The sensible thing probably is just to go down to the um, go down to the supermarket and buy yourself a tin of brasso. I hate the stuff. It's all metho on top and it's all paste in the bottom. So we put a bit in there, back in there with the screwdriver. Best way to clean that crap out of the hole, see? is with a bamboo skewer so a couple of hours of messing around later I've got a safety valve in there that doesn't seem to want to hold pressure over about 50 psi now whether I'm going to redesign this completely because I'm not particularly happy with it it's very basic I mean, look there, if we pump it up, it's, it's, that's about as far as it goes. It starts squirting water out everywhere. Seems to drop a lot of pressure, but steam expands. So I'm sort of thinking that's good enough to give it a try. I'm going to have a think about it. We might come up with something better before the engine fires up. But we've got a pressure valve. Look, it's just a valve, just a nut, and a spring, and a fibre washer to go in the boiler. A new fibre washer, that one's about, it's been unopened and closed so many times that it's a bit stretched. But, hopefully that's going to do the job, that's what it looks like. And, we're going to call that part finished. It needs a polish, and I might get into that with some brasso or something, some abrasive of some sort, and just polish it up. And it'll give you a nice clean hole, picks up everything that's in there, burnishes it a bit. Next week, we move on to the engine. That's fairly straightforward little motor, there's not much to it. Hopefully next week it'll have settled down a little bit and I'll be able to put some time into into different parts of it. But this has been a bit of messing around. I'm sort of fairly impressed that it's over. So anyway guys and girls, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. It really makes me happy. And click the like button. Do it now. It's down there. Click it. And leave a comment, which is also down there. And, yeah, more soon.